Yes, this is the Woman Agenda live here on the Woman Agenda channel with me, Raju, here live. How are you guys doing? Hope you guys are having a fantastic Saturday. It's afternoon in the UK. Hope you guys are doing great. I'm trying to get back to my best. Uh, like I said yesterday, I was supposed to have a live interview yesterday. I was supposed to have, I was supposed to produce lots of content yesterday, but due to the issues which I had, I wasn't one hundred percent well. I could not do that. Uh, but yes, there would be uh, this content. So this is what we're talking about. Like you see, no. On the still episode two of India's Forgotten Woman Warriors. I hope you like this episode. And also Bollywood Central can be up later on today. Only on the Woman Agenda channel. If you want to get in touch, if you want to be uh, a live guest, if you want to be featured, if you want to promote your product, we are the channel to do it on. Get in touch, channelspoiler309 at gmail.com. Absolutely. Remember that for loads of things. And you can collaborate with us as well. And uh, on there, so let's uh, kick it off. This is in this Forgotten Woman Warriors. We're trying to highlight the woman contribution when uh, uh, before independence and that kind of stuff. And uh, this is the second episode of that series. And which is the first woman warrior we want to talk about today? It is Rani Avanti Bai. Her name is. Now, Rani Avantibai passed, passed away on the 20th March 1858. She was an Indian freedom fighter and the queen of Ramgarg, present day Dindori, is known as in Madhya Pradesh, an opponent, an opponent of the British East Company during the Indian Rebellion of 1857. Information concerning her is sparse and mostly comes from fall folklore in 21st century. She has been used as an icon in Lodi politics. She comes from the Lodi Rajput community. So Amantibai Lodi was born in the Lodi Rajput family in uh, Manki, Mankadi village district Sioni. Her father's name was Jugar Singh. She was married to the Prince uh, Vikram, uh, Vikram Dittya Singh Lodi, the son of Raja Lakshman Singh of Ramgar. Has two children, Aman Singh and Sher Singh. In 1851, Raja Lakshmi Singh died. Raja Vikramaditya became king of Ramgarh. As a queen, she effectively administrated state affairs as the guardian of the minor sons. The state power came to the queen. The queen ordered the farmers of the state not to obey the instructions of the British. This reform work increased the popularity of the queen. When the revolt of 1857 broke out, Amantibai raised and led an army of 4,000. Her first battle with the British took place in the village of Kerry near Mandala, where she and her family were able to defeat the British forces. However, stung by the defeat, the British came back with vengeance and launched an attack on Ravgar. Avantibai moved to the hills of Devgar for safety. The British army set fire to Ramgar and turned to um, Devgar to attain the queen. Avantibai resorted to uh, guerrilla warfare to fend off the British army. She took the sword from her guards, sword and pieced it into herself and those committing suicide on 20th of March 1858 when facing almost certain defeat in battle. This is obviously courtesy of a en.wikipedia.org After independence, Avantibai has been remembered through in performance and folklore, a folk song of the Gundi family in uh, Addis Vasi tribe of the region. The Rani, who's our mother, strives repeatedly at the British. She's a chief of the jungle. She sent letters and bangles to others, rulers and chief lands, and aligned them to the cause. She vanquished and punished the Britishers out in every street. She made them panic so that they run away. She is among the Vriyaganas, Hiraik women, lauded by groups of people involved in the events of 1857. All the examples of who include, we all know um, Rani Lakshmi Bai, Asha Devi, 
Jalkari Bai, uh, Mahabir Devi, and Uda, Uda Devi. Although, although little is known of Vanti Bai except through the folklore, her story merited a British inclusion on the National Council of Education, Research, and Training, uh, in, which is uh, known as NCERT. History textbooks from 2012 are the participant in the 1857 rebellion after parliamentary protests from the uh, Bharti Janata Party. And basically, basically by, along with the accounts of the Dalit folk heroines, are meant to promote the image with a biography. And then they named part of the Bargi Dam project in Jabalpur in her honor as well. And the next warrior, Indian warrior, we want to talk about today, who made a big difference in uh, bef uh, before India's independence. It's amazing how so many of these warriors ha have never been mentioned. It's, it's absolutely amazing. Rani Velu Nachia, hopefully I've, I've said that right. So Rani Velu Nachaya was a queen of uh, Sivya Ganga estate from uh, 1780 to 1790. She was the first Indian queen to wage war with the East Indian Company in India. She's known by Tamils as Veramangai, brave woman. She was a princess of Raman Nathapuram and the only child of King uh, Chilamuta, and I'm not going to try to pronounce this. Without getting wrong, of the Ramgarh Kingdom. She was trained in many methods of combat, including war march, weapons usage, martial arts like uh, Valari, uh, Silambam, horse riding, and archery. She was a scholar in many languages and she was proficient in languages like French, English, and Urdu. And she married the king of uh, Sivan Gangai, with whom she had a daughter. When her husband, Mutu, was killed in battle with EIC soldiers, she was drawn into the conflict. She escaped the battlefield with her daughter. During this period, she formed an army and sought an alliance with the Haida Ali with the aim of launching a campaign against the Indian company. When Velu fought the uh, place palace uh, where the EIC stored some of the ammunition, she arranged a suicide attack on the location, blowing it up. And as she re reiterated the kingdom of her husband and ruled it for 10 more years. In 1790, the throne was inherited by her daughter, Velasi. She granted powers to her daughter with the Murudu brother to help with the administration of the kingdom. 1980, which died in a few years later. So her contribution has been pretty good um, and pretty significant uh, against the East Indian Company. Um, it would be good if these were, women were highlighted and we would have to say they've forgotten what is, but unfortunately that is the case. Uh, another Indian warrior which we need to talk about is Onaki Obava. Hopefully I said it right because I know I probably haven't. Apologies. So she was, an, on, in the 18th century, she was a great warrior warrior who fought the forces of Haider Ali single-handedly with a pestle. In the kingdom of Chitradurga of Karnataka in, in India, her husband was a guard of a watchtower in the rock fort of Chitradurga. In the state of Karnataka, she is celebrated along with the Abhayat Kirani as the foremost Women warriors and patrons, she's belonged to um, Chalagdi community. Uh, let's talk a bit about, about uh, her heroics. 
During the reign of uh, Madhakari and uh, Yaki, the city, 1754 to 1779, a chance of a man entered the Chandradurga fort through a hole in the rocks, led to a plan, plan by Hyder Ali to send his soldiers through that hole. The guard Kahali uh, Muda Anuma, who was on duty near that hole, had gone home to have his lunch. During his meal, he needed some water to drink, so his wife, Ubevia, went to collect water in a pot. From a pond, which was near the hole in the rocks, the hill, she noticed the army trying to enter the fort through the hole. She used the anaki or pestle, a wooden a long club meant for pondering uh, paddy grains. To kill the soldiers one by one, by hitting them on the head and then quietly moving the dead without raising the suspicions of the rest of the troops. Muda Hanuma, Obiv's husband, returned from lunch, was shocked to see Obiv standing with a bloodstained onaki and several of the uh, enemy dead uh, bodies around her. Later the same day, she was found dead either due to shock or having been killed by the enemy soldiers. She's considered to be the of uh, the, the of Canada female pride. The hole, the hole through which Haida Ali soldiers sneaked is called Onaki Ubivana Kindi. A heroic effort is depicted into a famous song song uh, sequence as well. And she's commemorated with a statue sculptured by Ashok Gudigar erected in front of the district of commissioner's office in Chitra Durga. And the next uh, women warrior we need to talk about is Kaladi Chenama. Her name is Kaladi Chenama. Now, Kaladi Chanama was a queen of Kaladi Kingdom in Karnataka. She took birth in the household of a man called Siddhapa Shetty, who was a native merchant in the region of Kondapur, Karnataka. She was from the uh, Lingayatha community. Chanama married King Sumitra uh, Nayaka in 1867 after Sumitra uh, Nayaka's death in 1677. Uh, Chenama effectively handled the administration of the Kaladi Nayaka dynasty. During her reign of 25 years, she repelled the advance of the Mughal army led by uh, Aurangzeb from a military uh, base in the kingdom of Kaladi, located in Sargar, Karnataka, India. She adopted uh, Bisapa Nayaka, one of the close relatives, when succeeded as her Bisapa. Nayaka, she also rendered a trade agreement with the Portuguese invol involving com uh, communities like pepper and rice. Chenagari is named after her. She's also permitted Portuguese to establish churches as Mirjan, Honovare, um, um, Chandravara, Kalyanpur, and in the state of Karnataka, she celebrated among uh, Ab uh, Abakarani, Kittur, uh, Belavadi, uh, Malama, and so forth, and so forth. She provided shelter to uh, Raja, Raja Ram uh, Chaturpati, the son of Shivaji, who was fleeing from the Mughal Emperor, uh, Emperor Aurangzeb. After meeting with the cabinet and treated Raja Ram with respect, but Aurangzeb attacked um, Kaledi, Kaledi uh, Chinema, fought the war without defeat and battle with the Mughals ended in a treaty. A subordinate of Kaledi Kingdom, Subhisa of Swadi also helped Raja, uh, Raja Ram through a loan. Kaledi Kingdom was probably the last to lose autonomy, autonomy to Missouri rulers and subsequently to British. 
She's considered as the ep epitome of the Canada uh, as women's valor along with the Rani uh, uh, Abaka. And the next forgotten woman warrior we want to talk about is Kitur Chenama. My name is Kitur Chenama. I know I probably have said one or two of these um, a little bit incorrect there. I'm sure I have. So Kitur Chenama, born November 1778, was a queen, Rani of Kitur, a princely state in Karnataka. She led an armed resistance against the British Indian Company in 1824 in defiance of the doctrine of lapse in an attempt to maintain India control over the region in which she defeated them but she was dead in the imprisonment of a second rebellion by the British Indian Company. One of the first female rulers to rebel against the British rule, she became a folk hero in Karnataka and a symbol of the independence movement in India. Kittu uh, Chenama was born on 14th November in Kati, a small village in the present Belagavi district of Karnataka. She belonged to the uh, uh, Langia Vat community and received training in a horse riding, sword fighting and archery. The husband died in 1824, leaving a son with a state of full of uh, uh, volatility. This was followed by a son's death in 1824. And then Rani Chinnama was left with the state of Kitur and an open touch to maintain its independence from the British. So Rani Chinnama adopted uh, Shiva Ling in the year 1824 and made him the heir to the throne. This ate the East India Company, who ordered the Shiva Lankapa's um, expulsion on the pretext of the uh, doctrine of uh, Lapsi, introduced by Lord Dalhousie. The, then the Governor General to announce independent, independent Indian states in 1848. The doctrine was based on the idea that it, in the case the ruler of independence state died childless, the right of ruling the state reversed or left to the uh, sovereign. The state of Kito came under the administration of Dawood uh, Collaborate in charge of St. Uh, Thackeray, of which Mr. Chaplin was a commissioner, both who did not recognize the new ruler and regent and notified Kito to accept the British regime. So she pleaded a case, but the request was turned down. I was a broker. The British tried to con confiscate the treasure and jewels of Kutur valued at around 1.5 million rupees. They attacked with a force of 20,797 men and 437 guns, mainly from the third troop of Madras native horse artillery. And in the first war, 1824 October, British forces lost heavily. St. John Thackeray. Collector and political agent was killed in the war. Uh, her, there's a memory place in uh, Bali, Hong Kong, Toluk, and it's in a post it due to poor maintenance of the surrounding park. Headed by government agencies. That's a bit, that's very, very sad that uh, it's in poor state. Should not be the case uh, if it's a warrior who's made such a big difference and defeated the British in the first war. Then why on earth has that place not been maintained? Absolutely shocking, that is. And Rani Durgavati is the the next one which we want to talk about. Don't forget, we're going to have episode three next week as well. So we will be continuing this. So 24th June 1564 was the ruling queen of Godwana from 19, from 1554 until 1564. She was born in the family of Chandal Rajput King Saliban at the fort of Mahabu. Rani Dragwati's achievements further enhanced the glory of her ancestral tradition of courage and patronage. In 1544, she was married to example. The Patsa, the Pasha, unfortunately, in 1554, due to the young, young age of Narayan, Durgati took the reins of the uh, Gond Kingdom. Devan Behor 
um, Adar and Sima and, and Minister. Uh, Mantakul helped the Rani in looking after the administration. Successfully and effectively, Rani moved her capital to Chorgar in place of Sinagar Fort. It was a fort of strategic importance situated on the Satpura Hill Range. After the death of Sher Shah, Suja at Khan, Captain Malwa, and was succeeded by his son, um, Baz Bahadur, in 1556, after ascending to the throne, Baz attacked Rani Durgavati, but the attack was repulsed. And in 1562, Akbar vanquished the Mal uh, Malwa ruler, Baz Bahadur, and conquered Malwa, made it um, uh, Mughal do dominion. Uh, consequently, the state boundary of the Rani touched the Mughal Empire. The Rani contemporary was a Mughal uh, general, Kawaja Abdul Majid Asaf Khan, an ambitious man who vanquished Ramchandra, the ruler of Rewa. The prosperity of Rani Dragati state lured him and he invaded Rani state after taking permission from the Mughal Empire Akbar. This plan of Mughal invasion was the result of uh, expansionism and policies of the Akbar. When Rani heard about the attack by Asaf Khan, she decided to defend her kingdom with all her might, although her, although her Dewan Bior other Sima pointed out the strength of the Mughal forces, the Rani maintained it was better to die respectfully than to live a disgraceful life. To fight a defensive battle, she went to Narai, situ situated between the hilly range on one side and two rivers, Gaur and Nam uh, Namada on the other side. It was only equal battle with, with trained soldiers and modern weapons, a multitude on the Mughal side and a few untrained soldiers with old weapons. Her Fajdar Arjundas were killed in the battle, and the Rani decided to lead the defenses herself as the enemy entered the valley. The soldiers of the Rani attacked them. Both sides lost some men, but the Rani lost more. So she reviewed the strategy. She wanted to continue the attacks on the Mughals on the night, but the chief discouraged her, insisted she took on the army in open combat in nightlife. By the next morning, Asaf had summoned Bingo, the Rani rode on an elephant, someone and came to the battle. Her son Narayan also took part in the battle. He forced the Mughal army to move back three times, but at last he got wounded and had to retire. In the constant battle, the Rani also got injured. So she took out the dagger and killed herself because she didn't want to surrender. So hope you guys liked that and it's getting dark in the UK and we're on for 20 unfortunately. That was India's uh, Forgotten Woman Warriors episode 2. Hope you guys did like it. Please click on the like button and do subscribe. Like I said, if you want to feature in the Woman Agenda channel, which you're going to get bigger and better this year, get in touch. Talent spot at 309 at gmail.com. If you want to get in touch with us on our social media media channels, it is very, very easy to do so. These are the, con the details of the social media channels. Talent Rajas, female spotlight is a Twitter handler. The Facebook is a woman talent podcast. Thank you very much guys for watching. Please let me know your comments and whilst you want to feature on the woman agenda, what do you want on there? Thank you very much. Uh, Bollywood Central is coming up later today. Stay tuned for that. For now, enjoy your Saturday. People, you are enjoy your day and stay, 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 stay healthy, stay safe. And I'll see you in a bit.